I mean, my, my, my guess is Baez and Contreras stay. If Baez goes, Contreras is not staying. And if I'm the Cubs and looking at it, like, what can I build around? I'd rather build around two people than one person, so to speak. You know, oh, you got Hendricks too, so I shouldn't, I shouldn't leave that out. But, like, uh, by, to me, Baez and Contreras are good foundation, right? Yeah, so it's think, interesting think, you bring up Baez just because, you know, I feel like he's kind of been the, the punching bag for some, for some Cubs fans as he's had to be benched, you know, for not knowing how many outs there were. People get upset that he looks disinterested from time to time. We've, we've gone over this at nauseum, but the, you know, his, his, his genius sometimes makes, makes his defensive play look lazy or whatever, but he's just, that fucking good. It's it's kind of amazing when he makes a boneheaded play. The other thing is, I think Cubs fans sometimes that that try to maybe short sightedly attack Baez. You know, he just became the third player this year to to accumulate twenty home runs, sixty RBI, and ten steals. The other two guys are Shohei Otani and Fernando Tatis Jr. So yeah, so when he he asked, is he is elite amongst the elite of the elite. Uh, yeah, so when he asked for two hundred million dollars, as much as we can make fun of it, when he has two errors in a row that kind of cost mm-hmm. them a game, you can poke fun at that. But that's again, that's part of what we do. We like to have fun and make jokes and and at, at, yeah. at our at our players' expenses. And but. Is he worth that money? Yeah, probably when you bring up something like that. I mean, offensively and defensively. I mean, he's, again, arguably some of the shit he pulls off. I mean, and in a way, you know, living in Chicago, I, I mean, I think for, for in a way he's made, I think in a weird way, he's, he makes Tim Anderson a better player too because they <laughs> both they both kind of are headline type of guys who want, who like that. Yeah, but. But if you watch, you know, Timmy this year, like I've never seen a dude make so easy, consistent throws. All of a sudden he could be, he could be to the third base side of the outfield and throw the guy out at first this year. He couldn't do that two years ago. Yeah. There's, there's a I, dramatic they, they, defensive they, improvement you yeah. can see with him. Probably Tony, but, uh, anyway, uh, well, to your, <laughs> to, yeah, to your point, uh, I, I think, Baez is definitely not being traded this week. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not worried about that necessarily. I think of of the candidates, he would be resigned to a long term deal. I think it would make sense. We've talked about that since last season. Yeah. Uh, and with that, I'm I'm glad you coupled that with Contreras because Contreras's interest in returning to the Cubs after his contract after next season would be completely tied to what the state of the Cubs franchise is at that point if they have let everyone move on. There's no incentive for, for Contreras to stick around. If they're going to be in the midst of a dramatic rebuild, once again, what is his incentive for re-signing with that team where he right. could move on to a contender where, where signing by as long-term almost is like a, a double deal where you actually get Contreras at the same time, potentially that's m- m- mere speculation, but I think there's some logic to it. Yeah, and I, I, there seem to be the buddies. You know, they're the only two who hustle on the team. So yeah, they're clearly joined at the hip. At least yeah, in, yeah, this is mine. Yeah, so I think him staying is a it makes an easy decision for Contreras in a way.